Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Hope you all having a great day. Today we'll be breaking down this scene and we'll try to discuss my creative process for 3D scenes inspired by the real world. Now if I go to the rendered version you can see it already takes some time to render it's because it's a very volume heavy scene. For the moody renders I always go for the overcast HDRI, multiplied with a sky texture. Also, I'll just organize the scene for the sake of the tutorial. As you see all the mountains are going to one collection, called ground blocking. And if you notice carefully you can see that all the mountains are just one mountain duplicated, and transformed slightly to give the impression of multiple ground planes. This makes the scene comparatively less laggy and also gives some ununiformity. I'll also put the rock group instances in one group to make it easy for me to hide and unhide things. Initially, I had a different angle in mind so I tried some different camera angles beforehand, it's very important as it gives a clear concept of what your composition is gonna be. After finalizing the camera angle we will start to build our scene. As you can see the second camera angle also looks decent but not good enough. Now to make the recording more smooth let's turn off the volume cube, we will come to that later and discuss the volume shader. Also for the clouds, you can see it's just a cloud PNG. I'll also turn them off for now for better visibility. Now if I zoom out of the camera you can see how big the environment is, yet the building blocks are so simple. Just a bunch of displaced planes scattered in a bigger plane. The curved road is the only detailed modeling I have to do in this scene. Let's hide the duplicates and focus on the main components. The main three blocks are the mountain, the road, and the water. As you can see the mountain is subdivided plane with a bunch of subdivisions and displacement. Always give your hero subject in the landscape a bunch of polygons, so that when displaced it will have more details. If I disable the displacement modifier you can see it's clearly a plane with a basic grass stone material, and I use the displaced geometry to achieve the normal data along the z-axis, to use that as a mask. And for the textures, I use the free stone and grass textures from Quixel Bridge. It's a massive library of high quality free textures and assets for 3D artists and game developers. You can go to Quixel.com to download the free software. For optimizing the scene, I made a collection of the ground plane and used the instances as duplicates. It helps massive scenes like this one to be workable in real time. Now for the road, the adjacent ground, and the railings, I applied the same method to make the as curvy as they are. Those elements all have something in common. A curve modifier along with an array.
The railing has a simple metal texture set up with some tweaking for dust accumulation. The ambient occlusion node comes to handy in these types of situations. You can pause and screenshot the setup if you want. The road has a simple asphalt texture, as you can see the whole setup is customizable and can be controlled by a simple curve path. But make sure that the curve's origin and the plane's origin are in the same place. Now for the adjacent ground. I applied all the modifiers for one reason, the road and the railing should be regular in shape and size, but for the ground, we need variations, so I sculpted some parts, although this process has its own pros and cons. If you notice you can see some gaps in the plane, I can join the gaps for a definite solution. But if I unhide the main mountain, we will not see any gaps. So I didn't waste time on that. Also where the ground meets the water, I kit bashed some rock assets from Quixel Mega Scans. It's a subtle change, that will not be visible from a distance, but is very crucial for achieving realism. Here also for more rocks, I use the rock collection instances to make the scene workable in real time. Also, I always use real-life dimensions for my renders, this helps with the camera's depth of field. And this low-poly human model, which is approximately 1.8 meters in height, helps me to keep things in real-world dimensions. And as always, I set an empty as my depth of field controller object. If I move the empty, the depth of field will change with its position. So now most of the scene is complete, and I can easily render the scene, save the picture, open it in Lightroom, edit, and call it a day. But we still haven't achieved the moody lighting, 
So let's set up the cloud system. But before that let's talk about the water plane. As you can see it's a huge cube with just a simple node setup. Transmission is set to 1, and roughness is set to 0. And for the ripples, I used a Musgrave texture through a bump node. The Musgrave height is connected to the height socket of the bump node and then the normal is connected to the normal. The distance is set to 0.15, and the strength is 0.2. The node setup is very simple here and you can easily apply this in any large water body. Also for more prominent waves, you can crank up the strength in the bump node, but for this scene, I think 0.2 is enough. And now we will go to the most delicate part of this scene. It's the volume cube. For this, I used a volume scatter node with the density controlled by some math operations and anisotropy set to around 0.7. This gives a very cloudy sky and lighting. I will show you what part of the density mask does what and if you want you can pause the screen and screenshot the node setup. Actually, it's very basic, with a gradient texture to give a denser fog upside, and very low when it's close to the ground. Then it's multiplied with a noise texture, to break up the uniform line of gradient, and give it a more cloudy look. And that's all, now we will render the scene and do some post-processing in Lightroom. I will discuss my work process in Lightroom in some other video for sure, but for now let's call it a day. Hope you get to learn some tricks, and also the thought process behind my renders, if you like these types of videos, give it a like, and don't forget to press the bell icon, and share with your friends. Thank you, stay sharp, and stay creative.